Oh, it definitely needs to change. Yep. On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we're doing a budget engine build on a Tillotson 212 electric start engine. The bike that it's going on is the Dirt Hog. It's Charles's Coleman CT200 UEX, very popular mini bike model. And this is an electric start engine, so we need to keep the stock flywheel with the ring gear around it. So we're going to be installing a hot cam, but nothing too crazy because we need to keep those RPMs manageable uh, to keep the flywheel intact, but we're going to be installing a billet rod and a high flow carburetor. We're calling this a budget build because we're keeping the stock flywheel, the stock valve springs, and a few other of the stock components that you could upgrade later on if you wanted to. Uh, this should go from about 9 to 10 horsepower up to maybe 14, 15 horsepower. Sweet. And Charles loves torque. This build is all about torque and we're gonna be installing a nice Torquey Mod 2 cam that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. The performance parts we're using are from our sponsor, GoPowerSports.com. It's essentially a stage two cruiser kit that we're gonna be using, and we'll talk more about it later. If you like what you see, you can find links in the video description, and any time you place an order with GoPowerSports, let them know the guys at Cars and Cameras sent you. Let's get this thing up in the air and torn apart. So on the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix, this bike did a scorching 10702 with Charles driving. Now, uh, I'm pretty confident with these parts, we are gonna shave some numbers off of that time. So uh, since the bike is so muddy, we're gonna take this engine off of this bike and put it on a clean table. So when we work on it, we don't introduce any dirt in it. So Charles, let's get this engine off of this bike and uh, get, get busy. Oh, there we go. One more. There goes that oil. Yeah. Try to save that gasket, oh. though. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. Oh. Oh. Wait. Ooh, it definitely needs to change. Yep. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah, that oil is like what? Two it's or got, three it's hours old. It probably has two hours on it. Yeah, that's why it's important oh to change your oil very soon with these with these engines, small engines, because they always do a lot of breaking in. Yep. Look at that. Oh. A lot of breaking in. Oh my gosh. And it's totally normal. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, when you're doing this yourself, just be very mindful that this engine does not have a lot of hours on it, so the gasket can pop off pretty easy, but it still can tear, so be, be gentle with it. And another thing, is that if you put all this effort into cleaning out like the break-in metal and stuff, take out both drain plugs because they hide material in there. So you'll clean it all out, put fresh oil in it, and if you wanted to, you had to open it back up, there'd, there'd still be stuff in there. So just blow them out and run the drain plugs back in. Little tech tip. So we're removing the fuel tank next because it's gonna give us room to remove the governor. We're gonna be making uh, a mess. Hold on. hold on. Here it comes. <laughs> that wasn't bad. Are you, are you ready? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. All right, I'm not ready. Let go. All right. All right. Oh, God. Not too bad. No Executed too bad. perfectly. Teamwork. And that Sunoco gas just smells so good. So in here, this white plastic gear, that is the governor. What happens is as the engine rotates, there's a gear on the crankshaft that spins this plastic governor gear. When it spins at a uh, certain RPM, there's a couple of metal arms that get thrown out. It's almost like, well, it's not gravity, but... It's centrifugal it's force, right? Centrifugal force, thank you, John. The centrifugal force forces these arms out, which have a little... It's not a cam, but it's got a couple of fingers that press out on the plastic button in the center. The plastic button presses on this metal arm that almost looks like a hockey stick inside of this engine, which transfers up through the case to this arm right here. When this arm uh, is activated, it pulls back on the throttle, which 
you know, that's that's the sensation you get when you're when you got the thing pegged and it's accelerating and all of a sudden it plateaus. That's the governor. We're getting rid of that because we want to just keep going. So this is the most delicate part of the process. There's a little spring clip on this shaft. It is very difficult to do. What I like to do is put a couple of flat blade screwdrivers in the gap of the clip and I like to spread it out wide enough to slip it off the shaft. Thank you, sir. Hopefully this will work. It's gonna try your patience. Sometimes this process takes like 30 seconds. Other times it takes minutes. I think the first time I ever did one, I struggled for 30 minutes. And then you came up and did it in 30 seconds. I almost got it on that one, but I got Zero. it. Zero, my turn, my turn, my turn. No. If you lost it, I'm no, sorry. Dude. Oh, actually, it's John's turn. Exactly, it's my no, turn, boys. It clips off, dude. But it's not out, it's John's turn. Aha! Nice job, guys. Thank you. I worked hard at it. Oh, hey, I found the clip. Did you? Yeah. That I dropped in the engine. Oh, sweet. There is it that, is. Is that magnetic? Uh, it was for, yeah. All right. So we're not quite done with removing the governor assembly. We've got the governor arm left, but we're going to go ahead and put this on top dead center, remove the camshaft. Here you go, buddy. Oh, there you go. Study that all you want. And uh, we're going to remove the rod next. So this rod has 10 millimeter rod bolts. You might need a Charles to help hold those lifters in. You don't well, yeah, he's, he's holding yeah. the lifters for me. They might have stayed in place, but... uh, Why leave it to chance? Yeah, because if those drop far enough, then the uh, push rod tubes... Yep. And, if you've are, and if you've already pulled fall. them out and replaced the push rods, a good thing that keeps those flat tappets in there is assembly lube. Nice and sticky. I've got some assembly lube. Yeah, but we don't want to remove these. Yeah. All right, I definitely say they're torqued to spec. I'm gonna try it without removing the uh, crankshaft. Look at that. That it's looks perfect. That looks good. We could yep. we could no resell scratch. this rod as brand new. That is nice. Room. There's not enough room, so we are gonna yeah. remove the flywheel so we can remove the crankshaft, and then that'll just give us all kinds of room. Since we're having to remove the flywheel, we went ahead and removed the uh, the flat tappets and the push rods. So we're going to lay them out in the in the order that they came out, marking intake and exhaust. So that way we don't get them mixed up. Wow. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. So the best way to remove the flywheel is with a puller, but we don't have any uh, bolt holes, threaded bolt holes, or, or whatever. We don't have the right tool, so we'll just whack it. So we have everything clear on the back side. The cover is off, the side cover, uh, and we have this nut right here screwed on so we don't mushroom the crankshaft, and you just give it a little wrap. Bada boom. Just watch the coil. Bada bing. Yeah. So I just removed the crankshaft without removing the coil or the charging coils. The only way you can get this flywheel off is by removing the coil because it's interfering with the removal of the uh, starter, starter ring gear. Ring gear, thank you. The starter ring gear is a little bit larger than the flywheel so it, it can't come off without removing the coil. So my little tech tip on uh, not removing that. So let's uh, put this down in a nice clean spot and let's get to removing this rod. So we removed the crankshaft without removing the flywheel, but I bet a bunch of y'all would want to know what's under here. Now, I would suggest removing the coil and the flywheel before removing the crankshaft, but you know, we didn't, but we are gonna show you what's under here now. All right, 
So with the coil removed, Charles the should be able to have room, and he can pull it and straight the magnets off. Magnets. Yes. From the charging system, hold so, this on. So this is the charging coil, and the flywheel has four or two magnets. Two magnets. Yeah. Under here. And as that rotates and passes by this coil, it creates electricity. So now I'm going to remove the governor piece. Charles is going to go take it. Yes, it's got a okay, washer here. Cool. Remove washer. Um, Charles is going to go cut the end of this hockey stick <laughs> so we can reinstall it. Because uh, you can uh, drill well tap this hole and put in a bolt but we really don't want to introduce any metal into this system cutting that arm and reinstall it is going to work just as good if not better all right so you got to carefully pull down on this piston and this is just how we're doing it yeah you, a lot of people remove the head and pull the piston out through the top to replace this I have had a lot of luck with just pulling this down just far enough for the pin to pass, taking the clip out, putting the rod in it, and putting that piston back up in there. So there's a nice little indention here for removing this snap ring. Now make sure you got a good hold of it because this snap ring will go clear across the room and all the way into your neighbor's house if you're not careful. What we got here is a genuine rod from gopowersports.com. This thing's gonna let it turn up a bunch more RPMs without chunking any and, parts. And my favorite feature of all about these billet rods is not only how strong they are, is that it is forced oil lubrication on the dipper. Yes. So it goes all the way. It it there's a journal in there, and there's even a hole up here to make sure the wrist pin is lubricated. So as it rotates in it the engine, it scoops it. It scoops up the oil, and as it scoops, it's actually pressurizing it. It's really cool, and lubricating everything as well as also splashing the oil because the thank you because the wrist pin relies on oil splash. So while Charles is measuring the crankshaft, I'm uh, rolling in these bearings. And uh, then we're gonna add some, some, uh, 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 what is it? Assembly? Engine assembly lube for assembly. That's some stuff right there. All right, so we got the wrist pin in and the rod. It should look something like this. Yep. Now I'm gonna push push the piston back in the hole, nice and careful like, all the way until it hits, and the crankshaft is now going in. We're gonna assemble the rod cap now, and this kit comes with instructions. Please follow the instructions. Very carefully. Yes. Have you ever seen a fraction, uh, a, a rod that was, uh, there's a proce uh, procedure where the rod is all one piece and they actually fracture it to I think bring that's the how cap. these, I think. No, these are not fractured. These are oh, okay. machined. The fractured ones are really cool looking. So the correct way to install this is with the dipper down if uh if nothing matches up with the dipper down you have the rod in upside down and they're right charles yes the two, the two dots and the oil the oiling uh what is it the inlet right there those all need to be facing actually down. that's the inlet well yeah the inlet but then there's i guess that is the outlet that's the outlet we got the trimmed governor arm this is what it looked like originally Charles cut this part off, and this is going back into the block. 
and uh, putting the clip back in place. So you gotta hold the tongue just right and have this crankshaft in just the right place for this to go in. So where's that clip at, Charles? Um, I lost it, hold on. You got it right, there it right is. here. So I'm gonna install this clip as well as I'll probably the uh yeah sometimes i trim this down right here there we go yeah trim that down and then that allows so you can just clamp that right. on top so it won't so fall we're, we're gonna still install this but charles you want to trim this we might trim it or just leave the whole linkage in place uh, so we yeah. could use it if you plan on keeping the original carburetor with this build you're going to want to put this right back because you're going to be able to uh still use the factory linkage but you do have to add an extra spring pulling on the return for this uh this uh linkage here otherwise you won't. otherwise you're going to go wide open throttle yeah, when you crank you'll it have up. A, you'll have a runaway engine yes so trim now or later charles um we'll, tr we'll trim later we'll trim later yeah the reason why you want to trim that arm is because if it does rotate or get into it it will hit the rotating assembly, cause one heck of a noise, if not mess up your engine pretty bad. So you wanna take care of that. If not, just drill, tap it, and put a bolt in it. Or use it as a uh, crankcase vent, however you wanna do it. But you wanna keep it locked down. I'm ready for a brand new crankshaft, dude. Oh. Or camshaft. So we're ready to install the new camshaft that comes with this kit. Here's the factory one, and here is the new one. We're installing a Mod 2 cam, and you can phys if you can physically see a difference in the cam, it's gonna act a whole lot different when you actually get it running in the engine. The camshaft is kinda like the heart of the engine, it's what gives it personality. And with lobes that big, that much duration, that much overlap, it's gonna talk to you. So this Mod 2 cam, it's an oldie but a goodie. It's been around for a long time. It's gonna make power up to about 7,000 RPM. So let's get it installed. We're gonna plop the uh, push rods in up through the valve cover. So you wanna make sure you line up the dot on the camshaft with the dot on the crankshaft gear. So yeah, let's I'll see. I'll give you a hand here. Well, that's not so bad. Right about there. And we made sure to put a generous amount of uh, assembly lube right there where the camshaft kinda nestles in the engine block. Might take you a time or two to get this straight, but I think I got a first try, boys. Nice. Good job. Sweet. Some clearancing might need to be made. Yeah, it's a good idea to kind of rotate the engine a few times, both with it still open, and then uh, when you get your side cover back on, spin it over a few other times, and just listen for knocking, because sometimes there, you might need to clearance your camshaft. See, there's no good way to spin this over. Sounds good to me. I always sign my name. Charles is. Do I get to sign my name? Yeah, because you helped. Oh, man. And it does last. We know since we opened the other engine from the dirt hog. Twenty, twenty, two. All right, now that everyone has signed the inside of the engine, we're gonna begin assembly of the side cover. Um, Gonna add a little bit of assembly lube to the gears. Do you mind putting it back on TDC before we put it back? Sure, I can do that because okay. uh, that would be helpful for the uh, for the valves. For the valves. So we're gonna put this on top dead center, right there. We're gonna wipe some of this assembly lube right there and right here. Just generally anywhere that's got some uh, wear to it. 
gaskets in place. We are reusing the old gasket because we didn't damage it and this is a very new engine. Uh, if you were doing this job with an older engine, I'd say replace the gasket. But uh, it's so fresh, we should be good to go. So time to put the bolts in it. And they need to be torqued to spec. Click. Whatever that is. Now we're gonna install the push rods. Uh, I like to just stick them in there. Yeah. And uh, All right. where's my flashlight? And uh, in most cases, we always have to uh, yep. recheck the valve lash. Valve lash. Yeah, which the sheet said three thousandths on both. So you want to set the valve lash at 0.003. That's what I got right here. And uh, they are way excessive. So we're going to loosen up this nut and tighten up this adjuster until we get the right amount of lash. And you want yep. to feel just the tiniest bit of friction when you pass this in between there. Yeah, you don't want and that's to, what I've got. You don't want it to hold it back. No. So now that we got the valve lash done, we're going to reinstall the valve cover. And once Charles is done with that, all we've got to do is remove the studs on the intake so we can install our brand new Makuni and uh, install a flywheel. So here we go. Watch your fingers because there is a magnet in there and well, a little pinch hazard here. And there we go. Cool. Thank you, sir. Now, there is a oval hole. You gotta make sure it's installed correctly. Cause uh, if it's wrong, you're gonna find out pretty quick. 54 foot pounds. Well, that's what we're setting it at. Oh my. That's tight, boys. It's pretty tight. We're there. All right, now that the flywheel is installed i'm going to install our 22 millimeter makuni carburetor so if you're doing a stage one or low rpm the stock carburetor is okay but the 22 makuni is actually a very versatile carburetor we had a friend who had an engine with a 22 mil carburetor and it was revving to 9300 rpm 9260 is what we had it up to through those little tiny 22. of course it was only a 212 but just goes to show that whether you're working with a mod 2 or something all the way up to 9,000 plus RPM, 22 Makuni is a good versatile carburetor. So we're going to remove the factory studs. Don't take offense, boys. Don't take offense. And the way you do that is you can tighten down these the factory hardware to each other. This is a trick Ike taught me years ago. And once you get them tight, you should be able to just kind of gently yep, twist it and the stud removes from the head. That is amazing. It's a great trick, isn't it? Where'd you learn that? Charles. I don't doubt it. So you can buy the 22 millimeter carburetor by itself, or you can get the whole kit. I will link the whole kit in the description, so you make sure you order the right parts if you're doing a build kind of like this. Because you do need this intake manifold uh, that act as an adapter as well. So we're reinstalling the fuel tank and then we're gonna do the engine cover. Okay, so since we're going with a Makuni style carburetor, I'm able to eliminate some of this linkage because this is the original style linkage for the carburetor, original carburetor. Man, it already looks cleaner. Yeah, it looks way better when you remove that linkage. Yeah, so uh, we didn't have any fuel line, so I stole some of the emissions uh, line off of the original air box, and I'm going to be using it for the Makuni carburetor. Just a little tech tip. So you're going to have to buy more fuel line. I would still buy more fuel line because that clear stuff from Go Power Sports is going to be it's better, way cooler than this. So this is the fuel line now. 
Perfect. Yeah. All right. That'll yeah. be good. Where's yeah. the carburetor? I don't know. I lost it. Oh, here it is. Carburetor. So while the boys are finishing up the engine, I'm going to switch over our throttle cables. So when you go from factory style throttle to a Makuni carburetor, you actually need a different throttle cable. So on your left here is a Makuni style. It has a little barrel on the end. And on your right here, it doesn't have a barrel at all. And you need to switch over. So I'll link one of these throttle cables in the description as well. So you, uh, so you know you're getting the right one if you're getting a Makuni carburetor. It's important to pay attention to how your throttle cable is routed and installed. So just when you're taking it apart, make sure you know how to get it back together. Yeah, that's one. I, I, whoa, whoa, wide open. <laughs> it might be easier to install the barrel end and the carburetor first. I don't know. You can try it. That is a good idea, yeah. Where's the smoke screen button and oh. the, uh... There we go, yeah. It's hey. looking good. Nice. Yeah. Got that back in place for him. We're gonna install this lovely header sock so that way it's that way we, no one gets burnt on the hot lap because we want a hot lap, not a hot leg. Looks good. This is the first time we've ever used one of the uh, the, the Coleman pipes, I think. But that's pretty it's, sweet. It's freaking perfect. That yeah. was that's different than the one I had. I like oh, yeah. this one. We're using the uh, the racing high flow muffler. It doesn't really make it quiet per se, but it definitely brings it down from 110 decibels to maybe 102. It makes a difference. It's not huge, but it helps with the backfires. Yeah, too. helps with the backfires. This thing is looking pretty sweet, guys. I think it's ready to go. We got. I I think we even have fuel in the tank. Got oil in it. It looks. Yeah. It looks good though. It turned out really nice. This is the nicest setup I've ever had on this bike. Yeah. It looks so we're good. gonna break in the camshaft and uh, take it for a little rip. All right, man, give it a shot. The battery sounds a little low, man. Let's give it a okay. shot. Okay. So break in the cam running around nice and easy yeah yeah nice right. and easy keep them rpms up and stuff don't do anything crazy all right sounds pretty good i'm excited and it's not too loud no it's not bad it, it, but you can definitely tell there's a oh there's you a can cam definitely in there, tell. Yep. Yep. yeah 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 like my famous saying you can hear the duration yeah yeah <laughs> and it sounds like we got the valves adjusted right sounds like we have clearance between the crankshaft and the cam Good job, guys. Sounds happy. Hey. Good job. Good job. Hey, yeah. All right. Dirt Hogs fun. Air 5. <laughs> so we put Charles's battery on the charger, and the Dirt Hog should be ready for its maiden test drive with the Mod 2 camshaft and the tilts in 212. Uh, we just made some uh, big improvements to the cars and cameras of Grand Prix. This is one of the very first projects to go around uh, after we made our modifications. Oh, we'll get a time up on the board. But Charles is going to get to know the bike a little bit because it's definitely going to handle yeah. different now that it's got more RPM, more cam, better mm -hmm. carburetor, etc. So let's, let's do it. I'm excited. All right. Shoot. And lasers. Lasers. <laughs>
Don't let her get away from me. Look at the back fender. Look at the back fender. The tire no. ate it. Oh no! The tire Charles. ate it just like the ground did my butt. Oh, are you okay, bud? Here, I got the bike. I got the bike. Oh, yeah. That hurts. You sure you okay? Yeah, I usually land on my feet like a cat. Usually you do. You I wasn't. I wasn't this time. That was the first time I've ever seen you lose it on a wheelie. Yeah. That's it doesn't the very happen first time. often. But well, it just kind of shows that hold there's on, hold there's on. more perform oh, yeah. performance this, this here. Oh yeah, definitely got more. Yeah. Hey, good as new. What bent fender? Don't burn your arm. On the exhaust. There yeah. you go. Good to go. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely seeing a lot more bottom end because I've never see, seen you carry the wheelies like that before. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also seeing a bit more on the top end, I believe. Oh, you're yeah. moving the governor, I yeah. Barely, I barely had enough room to stop. Oh, I saw. Thank goodness we put new brakes on. Yeah, I was just comparing it with the uh, old uh, the old engine because you didn't have the governor on that. Nope. So, uh, better bottom end and better top end. This thing ought to shave. Okay, so the track is still wet. I'm, I'm going to say that we're still going to shave off at least a second. I think you're right. With worse conditions out on the track. I agree. Yeah. So we can uh, send you around the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix, and then for, let's for throw practice. a GPS in your pocket and see what the top speed's looking okay. like. Yeah. Sweet. So the time to beat on the Dirt Hog with the stock tilts in 212 is a 107.02. It's at about 13th, 14th place on the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix. Now we have made some modifications to our racetrack. We made a whole episode about it. Go check it out right here if you haven't seen it. But the biggest upgrade were lasers right here. So we no longer are timing with our phones. Um, but that being said, we had to extend the finish line um, a few feet. So we might be, I don't know, a quarter to a half second slower just because we had to, we're having to start in the middle of the beams. So that being said, Charles is lined up and we're gonna send him around the track. This is weird guys. No one's saying ready, set, go anymore. I don't All even right. have to, uh, I guess it's whenever I want to. That's right. Man, yeah. convenience. All right, well, are you ready? I'm ready. I, now it's my turn to ask if everybody's ready. All right, that's fun. This lap, I'm gonna say he's gonna do it in 107 because we're losing about a second because of the distance uh, of the finish line. That's about a second off of what we're gonna have. So I'm gonna say he's gonna run another 107. Watch out for the deep mud. You want to run it again or are you done? It's a uh, little scary because it's wet. So Ike wrote down Charles's time and we're going to reveal that here in a second. But first, we got a GPS speed app that we're going to give Charles. And we're going to figure out the top speed now that we don't have a governor and we got a camshaft in there. All right. I'm going to say my estimate. I hadn't ridden it. Just seeing it rocket around the property, 48 miles per hour. I'm going to say 40. Yeah, for some reason, I was going to say 43 because I might have to lift. Yep, and you got some pretty short gearing on that thing. Yeah, that's one, true. One mile per hour, Bob. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of throttle. Perfect. All right, you ready?
All right, so we just ran the Dirt Hog with the Tillotson 212 with the budget-built motor, Mod mm -hmm. 2 cam, and we ran a top speed run. So remember that all of these in red are the old track configuration. We think that how we set up our new laser system, it's going to be a bit, little bit slower. So we've written the new time in green. So Charles, you ran on the Ooh. Dirt Hog built Tilly a 1, 0, 5. All right. Point two. Not, not bad. So that puts you right here, man. Oh, okay. You're faster than the Bronco. Pretty sweet. And the Bronco, is, that's got a Tilson 228 on it. Ooh. So it's got a whole lot more horsepower. Um, yeah. Sweet. I'll, I'll give it another go when the track's a little drier, but still. Suboptimal track conditions as well. So I think you did a good job. As for top speed, you ran it. Ike's guesstimate was 48. I said 40. Yeah. What did you I say? I said 43. 43. 44.3. <laughs> Oh well. So, I mean, no, that's pretty darn yeah. good. Yeah, it's, no, yeah, for that little strip, and I, I came out of it pretty there's quickly. More in it. So, yeah. So, I mean, he's got it set up for low gearing. Yeah, hill climbing and uh, like the Busco Beach kind of sand. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, if you got a tall gear, it's no good. I think it's pretty perfect for yeah. how you have it set up. So, 44 miles an hour is respectable. Uh, there's probably a little bit more left in it because it's supposed mm -hmm. to be good for up to 7,000 RPM, oh, yeah. but it didn't quite sound like 7,000 mm -hmm. RPM. So the reason we're calling this a budget build is because we only put a rod, a uh, camshaft, and a carburetor and a couple other bits and pieces in it. You're using the stock tilts and push rods, the stock valve springs, stock rockers, stock flywheel. So you got an electric start, yep. 7,000 RPM, 50 mile an hour motor. I love it. Yeah. So thanks for watching this episode, everybody. Leave a thumbs up for the mini bike content. If you like the parts and you want to check out this kit that we use in today's episode, you can find it at gopowersports.com, or you can find the particular parts we used at links in the description of this video to the camshaft, the rod, the carburetor, the stage one kit, everything. If you like the Dirt Hog, pick up some Dirt Hog stickers at our website, <laughs> cars-cameras.com, if you got a Dirt Hog uh, of your own. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and we will catch you next time. Oh, Charles? Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody gets a turn. Everybody gets a turn every five minutes, and the flashlight just goes to the ceiling. Come on, Ch Charles. What was that? Charles. What was that? Has it been five minutes?